three, four. Hello, my name is Brett Robley, and I teach C Sharp programming in the business school at Cal State University Fullerton. The class is ISDS 309. If you've followed along on the last three videos, this is an extension of that video. We're going to create an array of objects of the student class and we'll pull in the previous solution. So I'm going to grab this from the last video, which was on constructors, and I'm going to select all, and then I'm going to copy the code to the clipboard. Let's close the solution, and we'll create a new solution so we don't overwrite the last one, or, or a new project. I'm going to call this Create Students Array of Objects, and then I'll navigate to uh, save the project in my preferred location. Now let's again select all and delete. Don't cut because it'll overwrite what's on the clipboard. Now I'm going to paste what's on the clipboard. Now we have our code from the last project and then delete everything in the main method. All right. Now let's get started. We'll create an array of student objects. The book uses eight. I'm going to use three to make the entry easier and a little faster for the video. We'll create an integer x which we'll use as our subscript into the student array. We'll create an ID uh, so we can kind of track that, a name and a GPA for the entry. Now let's create a for loop where we go through the student array based on the length of the student array and we'll instantiate objects for each of the array locations. We'll first call get data to get information from the user. And then we will instantiate the object passing what the user typed in for our parameters to the constructor. Now, let's create uh, some code to sort the array. And now let's put in a few statements to ask the user for input from the keyboard. And we'll loop around three times asking for that input. I'm sorry, we'll uh, loop around and display the students. So now inside the main method, we'll create another static void method called getData. And we'll use the out keyword, which means that we have to populate those and those will get sent back to lines 9, 10, and 11. Each time through, we'll populate those variables using the out keyword. We'll declare string in string which will just take the keyboard input. And then we will use try parse to make sure that we're getting something from the keyboard in character form that we can convert to a number and if we fail We'll just set the ID equal to zero. Okay, now we're asking for the last name and we'll display the ID. Whoops, I forgot to put the ID in. I'll go back and get that in a second here. Let's read in the name. Okay, let me go back and put in ID. So in the display, it's going to display the ID. We're not actually saving anything in the second step there. 
and now let's go get the GPA and since the ID was an int we use int.triparse GPA is um, going to be a decimal point so we're gonna go get a, a double we'll do double triparse to validate the input and if the user doesn't comply or makes a mistake it'll come through as 0.0, .0. Okay, now here's the, the new bit. We're going to use an interface. So we're going to update the student class and we're going to say it implements the iComparable interface, which means that we now have to fill in the iComparable methods that are required by the interface. And if you need more detail on this, you should look at chapter nine in the Feral textbook, Microsoft Visual C Sharp 2017, an introduction to object-oriented programming towards the end of the chapter. Now we're going to pass a generic object called O. We'll set up a temporary student. We will take the passed in object and cast it to the student type. And now we'll do our test and say if this object's ID number is greater than the temp student we passed in, we'll return 1, which means that this ID number is greater. Else, if this ID number is less than the temp student that we passed in, we'll return a negative one, which means it's less than, obviously. Otherwise, we must have a match on the ID. Remember, we're not comparing the GPA, we're not comparing last name, we're just comparing the ID. So return value zero is what we send back when they match. And so that's the compare function that is required in order to compare objects of something more complex than an intrinsic type. Otherwise our program wouldn't know what to compare against to see is this object equal to that object or is this student equal to that student. Now notice I'll put in IDs out of order. The names and the GPA we don't care too much about and then once I finish this and hit enter, you'll see that it's sorted by the ID number only. And there it is, two, four, and six. Okay, thanks for watching.